Good evening, race fans. Welcome to the AFT show. It is episode number 11, and today's show is presented by Cycle Gear. I'm Scotty Dubler, the voice of American Flat Track and co host of the podcast Off the Groove. Today, we got a great show. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, let's bring in my co host. It's Kristen B from NBC Sports. Kristen, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Just enjoying being out here in North Carolina, moving into the house, kind of settling in. Looks like you have a few more decorations than the last time we saw you. Um, how's that going? I mean, how's, it, how's the move in going? Uh, we're still unpacking. As most people know who have recently moved, it's a it's a process. It's just a little bit each day, and uh, we're finally starting to feel a little more home. Right above that surfboard, before we came on and started recording, you told me that's a picture of your dad. So tell me about that. Yeah, that's Daddy V. Um, that was actually taken out at Verona Oaks Motocross Track, which is my home track in Southern California. It's uh, east of San Diego, and uh, he used to throw it down pretty hard out there. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we got a great show today. Actually, two riders. One has already retired from racing, but he's back in the game as an owner. And another one that's itching to get back onto the top of the victory box, the podium. And uh, let's bring him in. Kenny Coolbeth, 37 wins on the Grand National Circuit, the 1994 Rookie of the Year, and slamming Sammy Halbert, 13 wins on the circuit, your 2006 Rookie of the Year, and your 2011 Singles Champ. Let's bring him in. What's up, fellas? Hey, guys. How much? What's up? How's it going? Everything good? I mean, you guys getting through quarantine all right? Yeah, totally. It's been uh, it's been good. Just like uh, just still building, getting ready for for whenever we get to start. Yeah, just busy with stuff, you know. Just fine detailed stuff. We did a uh, did a few races here and there, and uh, found a, found some weaknesses on on both parts, my part, Sammy's part. So we've been working on that. So should be a uh, should be good. I'm uh, pretty excited about the year to get started. Kenny, before we started, I saw your son Liam run out into the frame, and I got so excited because he's the cutest little racer I've ever seen in my life. I hope he races. Um, has, has he been keeping you busy? Yeah, busy isn't the word. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> with school being out, we're trying to homeschool him and kind of kind of do our own thing with uh you know, the race and stuff, taking care of everything and taking care of the house and everything else. So it's uh, it's definitely a chore, but uh, it's cool. He's been riding, ri started riding quite a bit here in the last month or so, and he's uh, he loves it. You can't get him off it once he gets going. So, <laughs> but uh, hopefully he doesn't race. It's uh, it's one of those things. I know what, uh, what I've been through, you know, luckily nothing serious, but uh, you know, as a parent, you look at it uh, a little different. So uh, whatever happens, happens. Uh, it's going to be tough keeping them off the bike and keeping them uh, away from not racing. So we'll see what happens. Sammy, it seems like the trend for a lot of the fast guys is to move to Florida. I don't know what the reason is behind it. Maybe you can explain why did you move to Florida? Is it for the beautiful weather? Is it for riding all year? Why did you move down to Florida? Yeah, quite a few reasons for me. Like, I'm from Washington State, which, um, you know, I love the Pacific Northwest, but uh, it's a bit hard to be a pro motorcycle racer there and be able to ride all the time with uh, with how much rain we get during the uh, winter and stuff like that. And then um, also just the cost of living, like the uh, cost of buying a house out there on the West Coast is, is, is insane. Like, for, for the price that I buy a house out here in Florida, like, I'd be buying a mobile home. And wow. <laughs> So like a combination of reasons yeah. and, and really wanted to, to focus on my riding. I feel like that's one area I hadn't really focused on enough my, my entire career. I mean, I, I always raced a ton, like I do every single race. And during the winter out west, we got indoors. And so I would be on the bike, you know, you know regularly and racing a lot. But, but not, um, like, especially during the winter, you can't, you can't just ride every day out there um, outside and stuff like that. So, so for me, it was time for a change. And... Um, and Florida made sense for me. And then I, I specifically chose North Florida, Tallahassee, because there's a little more like elevation in here. It's not quite, I'm like almost in Georgia. So there's, there's I think better dirt, not always riding on sandy, like whooped out sand whoops and stuff like that. We do have sand for sure, but there's more clay and, um, and, and I'm just like 30 minutes from Georgia. So honestly, I ride in Georgia mostly just, just across the border. Well, Kenny, you moved to Florida a while back, too. I think you were still racing when you moved down there. Uh, and you were one of the few riders I've ever known that, that raced out of Connecticut. So what was your reason to move down to Florida? 
Yeah, that was kind of the main reason, you know, I was sick of the winter and, you know, like Sam said, the cost of living up in Connecticut, it was, sounds pretty similar to where he was from. So, um, so that was the main reason. And, uh, you know, obviously the training aspect, you know, you got, uh, sick of riding on the ice and, uh, you know, kind of gave, gave you bad habits. So we, uh, we kind of won it. We found, found this place here, uh, pretty cheap and, uh, we did a lot of work to it and, and I uh, made it our home for, uh, this is, I think we've been here for six and a half, seven years. So it's, uh, it was good for my training when, uh, when we were, when I was racing and, uh, really, uh, focusing on that. Sammy, you mentioned being down in Florida and being able to kind of train year round. Do you have a training crew down there that you're with? I know that there are a few guys like me will go down there for a few weeks. I know, um, Briar and Shana head down there. Do you have like a crew that you train with? Yeah, like here in Tallahassee, it's mostly motocross guys. Um, if I want to get with flat track guys, I got to drive, you know, out to Pensacola or, or mm -hmm. down south um, with where those guys are down there. But um, there's like such a strong core of like uh, athletes around here in Tallahassee. So a lot yeah, of Carmichael's training facility is too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Carmichael's, and then there's uh, GPF and MTF. Um, so there's yeah. a lot. Of a lot of facilities nearby, and then I got just a good group of friends that, that ride me across around here, and that's kind of like I'm pushing myself to try and get to the level where I can hang with, with those guys on the motor tracks, and then um, and then uh, locally here, um, there's this uh, place called Woody's Moto Ranch, which has a vintage motocross track. He was nice enough to put in a flat track for me, so so I've been uh, been just going out there and busting out flat track laps. So so far, I've just um, Ryan, Ryan Black Track by myself more more or less out here, but uh, Brian Smith actually recently purchased the property in this area as well, so he'll be he'll be here to train train a bit more as well. He comes down sometimes, and uh, him and myself and Thunder we're always out mountain biking and uh, uh, mountain biking. <laughs> <laughs> easy now, easy. <laughs> Let's talk about it, Kenny. You you rode for Nyla Racing for for a while at the end of your career, and then now it's Cool Beth Nyla Racing. Um, tell us about how that worked, how that team came together, and then you know what made you decide to call Sammy Halbert and and, and put him on those bikes. Well, yeah, John Weiss, the team owner, he uh, we we became really close, really good friends, and kind of hit it off the the last year that I rode, and uh, you know he. Uh, he asked me if I still wanted to be involved and, you know, kind of, kind of take over, you know, all the bikes and the truck and stuff. And I'm pretty mechanically inclined. I can learn, learn pretty much anything. So, uh, so, uh, yeah, we just uh, became pretty close and, uh, he kind of said, here's all the stuff. Let me know what you need. I want a rider that can win. And obviously Sam can win. He's proved that. So, uh, um, he was my pick and, uh, that's it. It's a, started there you know john john is one of those guys it's uh it's all in whatever it takes if he want if he's going to do something he's going to do it right so um our equipment is really really good right now so uh sam's got uh sam's uh sam's got uh a good opportunity i think to uh to get the number one plate honestly i think so uh it's uh it's gonna be fun, you know. Just uh, learning, learning a little here and there. That's the only, the only thing. Like on my end, you know, as a mechanic, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. Um, I know the ins and outs on stuff, but uh, just little things. Like I said earlier, it's, uh, you know, the little hiccups with the races that we already did. I'm trying to, trying to learn on that and uh, try to not make it happen again. So, um, so yeah, it's. Uh, I've been working hard on the bikes and you know we have had one bike that needed quite a bit of work after uh after um um south or um yeah up at traveler's rest there so just uh we're gonna have brand new stuff from the get-go after you know testing all winter and stuff so it should be good we've learned a lot over the winter and sam's sam's picked up a lot um he looks really good on the bike and you know obviously he's doing his part you know training and riding so every time i talk to him he's uh He's riding, so it, that's good. Sammy, what was your reaction to the opportunity? I mean, to get that call or to, to be a part of the conversation and make the transition from the Harley team now to your team this year? Yeah, well, for sure, like, uh, it was definitely time for a change for both for both me and Harley Davidson. So that was, you know, um, that was time for a change for us both. And then uh, just 
just like to be Kenny's pick, like that meant so much to me um, for for him to to want me to ride for him. You know, after being competitors with him for so long, and like Kenny's, you know, someone that that me and I think all the competitors have always looked up to and, and respected. And so, so to be his pick, like that's really all I got to say. Like that meant so much to me. And then um and and then just since I've got to work with him, it's been been really rad. Like you know, worked with a lot of different folks over the years and a lot of great teams and a lot of um, but I've never worked with like someone like Kenny who, who just lived it. He like he just got out out of living what 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 I do as a rider. And so so we can really connect on a good level like that. And then um, you know Kenny and I we didn't know each other too well other than just as competitors. And so I think you know both of us have been getting to know each other on on this more of a working relationship. And I'm guessing he was probably a little surprised at how I am to work with compared to. What, what, a, what a kind of a competitor I was and then from the same aspect like it's been like nice getting to know how he's such a hard worker and uh, the way I am sometimes with racing and my setups I'll be like oh you know change this back wheel and this front wheel and then come back in and like, no no change it back and and uh, and like you sometimes like you'll feel bad because you just like make this guy you know bust his butt changing this and then just, like, no, actually just getting just change it back and like Kenny's never made me feel bad about that, which is which has been huge. That he's just been real, just he's just on it. Like like I'm like I don't know if we got time. And he's like yeah we do. And he just gets it done. So so from that aspect, it's been it's been really rad, um, really all around. And then um, you know also our team owner with John Weiss and the Nyla Racing team. It's just been uh, everyone's been gelling really well, and we got roof systems on board as well. So we we really have a solid package, and uh, yeah, just just excited to get to racing whenever that is well now we know when it is so so sammy it seems like you guys tested first or got together first like in november december last year um you got to you got to ride the indian for the very first time you got to work with kenny for the first time how did that feel and and what was your first impression of the indian yeah it was really good like uh we were out there at the ocala short track and riding a big twin on the short track it was like man i can just ride this thing as hard as i want and and I, it was like I couldn't crash it. Um, I finally finally crashed it once now. Uh, <laughs> it's been crash, but uh, um, yeah, for, for the bit, for the first bit there, I was just like, man, it's so forgiving, and easy to ride, and just hooks the left so well. So, um, so yeah, the initial initially it was just like really awesome, and then just such a different aspect from from going to the track with the Harley team and like we're we're really testing with the Harley team because you're like trying to make something competitive with a better bike and now you go testing with an Indian and it's like, oh, it's pretty good. Like, uh, we can make it a little better. I don't know. Like it's, it's you start from such a good base. Um, so yeah. it's a totally, totally different, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like with the Indian now this season, um, the adjustments that you are making, are adjustments that we'll see on track because I, I remember last year getting notes from you so often and you guys were making adjustments and they were just smaller things but so far what are some of the you know maybe my new things that you guys have been working on just the little things yeah I think we're dialing in our suspension package and then just just learning how the bike reacts on different tracks like I still haven't really rode it on a cushion yet so that, that'll be a big test for us you know although I mean I don't have a lot of cushions mostly play half miles and stuff like that so just learning like the setups, just little things. And, and it's like it, you go out and you do tests by yourself and it's like, it's awesome. It's great. But then you go out against Mies and, and Bauman and the rest of the guys, and then you got to find that extra little bit. So that's, that's where we'll really have to get down to the nitty gritty. And some of that stuff just it has to happen on race day. Cause it's, um, that's when you're on the, you know, the actual track they were racing on, not testing on and racing against our competitors. So that's when we'll be looking for those little bits, I think. And, um, yeah, but both Kenny and I have been around long enough doing this. They will, uh, they will find a way. We are here with Sammy Halbert and Kenny Coolbeth Jr. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get their thoughts on the upcoming 2020 season. Motorcycling is the gift that keeps on giving. Cycle Gear, j &P Cycles, and RevZilla are partnering this June to raise funds for the Kurt Caselli Foundation, the National Motorcycle Safety Fund, and the Motorcycle Relief Project. Join the Ride is calling Charity Ride the weekend of June 19th through the 21st as we donate $1 for every 10 miles ridden up to $30,000 plus on Saturday, June 20th 
5% of all in-store sales across Cycle Gear and JMP Cycles will be donated to the fund. Go to cyclegear.com slash ride for more info. And welcome back. That's Sammy Halbert. Below me is Kristen Beat beside me. And below Kristen is Kenny Coolbat Jr. So, Sammy, um, what do you think your chances are on the Indian this year? Uh, FTR 750, obviously, it's been the bike to, to have the last few seasons. What do you think your chances are winning the championship here in 2020? <laughs> Put me on the spot like that, huh? <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. <laughs> we'll find out. You know, my motto this year, I'm just like, I'm not. I'm not trying to talk about it. I'm just trying to be about it. So we'll, uh, we'll go to the track and uh, lay down our cards and, and see what happens. So, so my focus is just on my preparation. And um, and, and so, so that, that, that's all I got to say about that, really. So, Kenny and, and, and Sammy, we've had a little bit longer offseason than we've ever had before. Uh, we we mentioned testing a little bit in the in the fall of 2019, maybe at the end of the year 2019. Mm-hmm. How close do you guys live to each other? I mean, are you guys planning and doing more testing since we have this little bit of a, a longer break, or are you guys just waiting till race season starts now? Well, it's definitely easier being somewhat close. I think, what are you, Sam, four hours away, five hours away? Yeah. Four, I think so so. so if, if we get something that we want to try, it's, it's somewhat easy, you know. So uh, we tested quite a bit before Daytona, and uh, – you know, did some little things, nothing crazy, just some asphalt testing that uh, that we wanted to do, just little things that uh, that uh, just so we knew. So uh, that was that was good that uh, we were somewhat close. And you know, the off season being so so long, it's actually pretty good for us. You know, because we can you know go ride, come back, and we have enough time to you know change a lot. So. I think it's actually good, but uh, I think it's it's time to go racing. It's uh, you know we've uh, I think we've done everything we could to uh, to make it the best we could. So uh, it's uh, like Sam said, it's uh, one of those things. You when you're testing by yourself, it's uh, it's easy to go fast. But then you know a couple of weeks ago we go to Traveler's Rest with everybody. And we're a little, little behind. So it's one of those things, like Sam said, I think we're going to have to, you know, grab it by the horns on race day and uh, put our heads together and figure it out. So it's, uh, it's good. I like the way Sam thinks and uh, how we work together. It's, uh, it's funny how, uh, how people are, you know, once they found out Sam and I were working together. It's uh, they're like, oh, that'll never work. They'll, they'll hate each other. That won't last for, you know, to two races and you know what it's it's i think it's pretty cool to work with him he's uh he's a cool guy and uh you know he has the same same mentality as i do so uh it's uh and that's winning we want to win i want to win just as bad now as when i was on the bike so it's uh we have the same we have the same thought process so that's good what do you guys think about starting the season at volusia I'm looking forward to it. I mean, for one thing, it's it's super close by um, for both of us, and then two, like I've I've won a lot of races at Volusia on on twins. Um, so uh, over the years, I've always started off day twenty bike week going there, and um, I feel like I've won there a lot. And and for whatever reason, it's that track has suited me well. And then we did a little warm up race there earlier this year, and um, like my first race on the Indian, and and since then we've kind of changed a package around that seems like it's made a lot better. Even between like we raced the Volusia half mile on um, one day and then we came back and did the TT and between those couple of days we changed some stuff that made like a world of difference for us. And so so yeah I'm looking forward to it. I mean for sure it's gonna be different racing there in July and then I think it'll be a night show as well, which is different than what we normally do there. It's a day race normally. So um but yeah overall I'm just, uh, looking forward to it. I think I think it should be good for us. With the season starting a little later in the year, 
Um, have you started mentally preparing for the climate change just because we're so used to going to certain tracks at a certain time of year? Are you doing anything different with your stamina? Are you starting to run outside? How are you kind of bracing yourself for that change? Well, yeah, I don't know how you mentally prepare for, for uh, the climate change. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're both here in Florida and uh, just, just doing everything I can to, to prepare. And uh, it is what it is, but I'll be, uh, I'll be hiding in the AC between events. <laughs> So Kenny, uh, I'm assuming Sammy is riding the same bikes you are riding. So what kind of changes were made to the bikes? I mean, you don't have to get too specific, but like what was the main things you had to change from your riding style to Sammy's riding style? Um, I know he's a little bit shorter than you. I don't know about you guys' weight. I mean, was there a lot of drastic changes you have to make just to get started? Not really. It's uh, so, so PJ Jacobson rode the bikes the previous year. So, uh, the suspension was kind of soft, but Sam actually, the first test we did seemed to actually like it. So we kind of build, build some, some other suspension kind of, kind of based off that. Um, we're about the same, same weight. So it, that's good. I can, you know, set sag, do all that without him. So it's, uh, it, that, that's really good. You know, the bike can roll out of the truck, you know, with the sag set, everything's set, ready to go. So, um, as far as, uh, you know, him being a little shorter than me, you know, arms and stuff, seat height. So we've been working on just detailed stuff, you know, handlebar length, pullbacks and stuff like that. Seat height, seat, seat uh, you know, combinations. Um, obviously, John Weiss owns a big uh, foam factory, which uh, it's easy to get seat, seat stuff. So he's been making us seats, different compounds and stuff like that. So it's all it's all what he likes you know i don't i don't care i'll do anything to make make the rider happy i've been in been been in their shoes so it's uh mentally you know you have to do everything to accommodate the rider really even even if it's kind of in the wrong step it's uh mentally it's uh it's good for them to know that you're on their side so i've been there you mentioned being there. I think it's such a cool dynamic being able to have someone on your crew that also used to compete. Um, how has that transition been like now being a part of the crew? But it was only a few years ago when you were still racing full time in the series. I mean, do you miss it at all when you've been helping him? Is there a part of you that wishes you could still be on the bike? What's that like? Uh, in a way, sometimes, you know, a couple times, like actually a couple weeks ago, you know, before we knew it was going to rain at Traveler's Rest, there was a practice, free practice. I was going to bring my leathers and, you know, do a few laps, but uh, I saw the rain coming. I'm like, I'll just leave my stuff home. But I get the itch every now and then. Nothing crazy, you know. I haven't ridden a motorcycle, it's funny to say, probably in a month and a half, two months, um, which is pretty crazy. Um, actually looking to uh get on the motorbike this week and uh kind of kind of get my uh get my stuff together a little bit so uh it's uh it's cool you know like like the mechanic side of it like i said earlier it's uh it, I'm, I'm actually learning as i go and uh, hopefully i figure it out you know pretty quick you know it, and it's uh it's one of those things it's it's fun and like i want to win just bad so it's uh I'm a competitor still, so it's uh, it's one of those things that never be never get out of your blood. Sammy, you're known as slamming Sammy Halbert. You're known as one of the hardest charging riders out there. Never give up. Uh, if there's a, a an inch, you'll take two inches and you'll you'll get there. And you might use your elbows to get up in there. Is that something that you will continue on the FTR 750, or do you think you will need to, or will you change your riding style just because you're on a different motorcycle? Ah, uh, man, we're just gonna, gonna have to wait and see what happens when I strap my helmet on. You never know. That's why, you know, I've always been, you know, a lot of, a lot of one of the more exciting riders is because uh, no matter where I'm at on the track, you know, a helmet strapped on, like I'm gonna be going for it. So uh, we'll see what happens. You know, I've definitely been able to refine my technique over the years. I think with any rider, um, that, that's the way it goes. So um, so I'm just trying to be an efficient rider and, uh, you know, not, not trying to knock anyone down, that's for sure. And, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm definitely uh, motivated um, and uh, trying to do everything I can to, to be up front this year. Um, so uh, we'll see. You're just going to have to tune in. 
Well, I think so, everyone's looking forward. Go ahead. To go ahead, I think Crystal. everyone's looking forward to seeing that. Like, just from my perspective, I remember last year there was a few times like Oklahoma City was right. Or, no, it was Oklahoma City last year. It was Springfield Mile. Um, in those final laps, I just kept seeing like Sammy like inch forward and inch forward. I'm like, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. I'd watch <laughs> film on Sammy from like years ago, and I'd see him get real aggressive, and I was like, he's gonna do it here. I'm ready to see it this year. Yeah, definitely the mile is not the place for aggressive riding, but uh, yeah, Springfield was fun last year. Felt like that was my best shot to get the win on the HD, but uh, it didn't happen, so uh, it is what it is. Yeah, well, I know everyone's excited to get back to racing, me and Scotty being probably the biggest two fans ready to get going. But... So guys, the, the 2020 schedule came out a little while back. Uh, double headers every, you know, every round is going to be double headers. There's no TTs for the super twins. A lot of half miles. Sammy, you're really strong on the half miles. Um, what track are you looking forward to the most to, you know, in the 2020 season? It's hard, you know, that's hard to pick just one because, um, the tracks that are on the schedule, like, really, I think they're really good for me. Um, they're kind of like right in my wheelhouse. Um, you know, I really enjoy the TTs. Um, so it's like sucks to not have any TTs on the schedule. Um, but, uh, but, but what we do have, I think is right in my wheelhouse with pretty much, uh, pretty much every track. So, um, just, just excited about it. And, you know, bummed that we're not making it out to the West coast, but, you know, we're obviously, you know, taking what we can get at this point and, uh, going for it. Kenny, was there a track when you were racing full time that you should love going to or a track that you're going to kind of miss? Uh, it, it hasn't been on the schedule for a while. Um, a couple years now. Uh, it's Hagerstown, Maryland. That, that's my all time favorite racetrack. It's, uh, just, uh, all momentum and, you know, smooth on the gas. It, it suited me pretty good. I've won quite a bit there, and uh, it, it was just a cool track to go to for me. It was kind of close to, to Connecticut where I was living back then, so uh, it was kind of like my hometown track. You know, all my friends and family were, were there, and so it was a pretty cool place for me. As a um, as part of the crew, is there one track that you have circled that you're like, this is where we're winning? Because you know where his abilities lie, where where his strengths are. But I feel like every year, like there are certain matchups or football games, you know, like this one's going to Green Bay or this one's going to be. Yeah. And you have one that you're just like, Sammy's got to win this one. Well, that's all of them, you know. It, you know, that's yeah. that's that's my mentality going in. You know, and if if that isn't isn't yours, then you might as well just stay home, really. Yeah. We'll take one more quick break. When we come back, we may have a little bit of a show and tell with these two guys below us. Be below me is Sammy Halbert, the 2011 AFC singles champ, and right beside him, the three-time champ, Kenny Coolbet Jr. Beside me is Kristen Beat. We'll be right back. We'll wrap things up after this. Motorcycling is the gift that keeps on giving. Cycle Gear, j &P Cycles, and RevZilla are partnering this June to raise funds for the Kurt Caselli Foundation, the National Motorcycle Safety Fund, and the Motorcycle Relief Project. Join the Ride is calling Charity Ride the weekend of June 19th through the 21st as we donate $1 for every 10 miles ridden up to $30,000 plus on Saturday, June 20th, 5% of all in-store sales across Cycle Gear and JMP Cycles will be donated to the fund. Go to CycleGear.com ride for more info. Sam, be, before we before we maybe do a little bit of show and tell, um, I see on social media all the time that that you don't know how to park a car. So did you miss driver's <laughs> ed, or, or, or do you do that on purpose? Or, or I mean, have you seen it, Kristen? He does, he doesn't even know how to park his car. Well, maybe if I had a car, like that van is long, you know. I got the extended version. And, yeah, it just like started to happen. Like I just I would just pull in and I'd be like. Man, that's that's bad. I got to <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so it just kind of ca came from that. But uh, yeah, definitely not. You know, you know, people talk about, oh, you're gonna go to four wheels, this and that. I'm like, well, have you seen me drive? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we need to start a hashtag: park it like Sammy or something like that. <laughs> yeah, park, <laughs> yeah, park like, like Sammy. Yeah, like Sammy. Yo. I get tagged. I love it. I got all the time for sure. <laughs> 
Twitter I love uses it. that hashtag every time I go to Target because I'm that person who fits in two spots. I'm like, we got a truck. Like, we just kind of take up two spots. I'm going to use hashtag Park Like Sammy next time. <laughs> Well, we didn't kind of give you guys a heads up on this, but uh, a few weeks ago, we talked to one of my heroes, Bubba Schobert. When we got done, he kind of walked around the house a little bit, and we had a little bit of show and tell. So, Sammy, there's a lot of stuff behind you. I see a couple of number plates. I don't see a 43 number plate back there that you used to have. Uh, can you grab something back there and tell us about it? <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm pretty new back here to Florida, so most of my stuff is, uh, is still in Washington State. But as I go, I'm slowly collecting stuff. This is one of my like my most prized uh, trophies though, because this is uh, it's from Rossi's Ranch, so it's kind of like a, a MotoGP more style trophy. And uh, you know, I've been going to the ranch for a few years now, and uh, and this time JD came and teamed up with me, and, and we, we got on the podium there and uh, and got a trophy from the ranch, which was uh, was was pretty pretty special. And then um, just. Uh, just this last week, we did the Flat Track Fight Club event, and, uh, and Tommy Duma donated a watch. And so I, uh, we did like a Parker challenge. So I actually got to race with Scotty Parker for the first time, which was was insane. Like I just lined up behind him in staging and seeing him in his uh, Harley leathers. I was just like, I was like, I need to grab my phone and take. Nope, I'm taking <laughs> mental pictures right now. <laughs> yeah. Mental pictures. I'm like lined up with the legend Scotty Parker. He's got his traditional. Leather, Harley leathers and helmet and everything and uh, lined up with him which was just uh, meant the world to me and Springsteen was there as well and Car came out and Cop and then a couple of young guys and so yeah, I won this nice watch donated by Tommy Doom the Fine Jewelers and, uh, and and so that was a uh, yeah it was a good event for us. Yeah. Talk, talk about the ranch rossi's ranch yeah. not very many people get invited to go there you have been the last few years i know one year you took thunder last year it was jd beach so so who all rides at the ranch i mean and they, they made a video game about you know, even riding just like at his house um talk about who rides there and what's what have you learned the most about going over there and riding yeah well i learned i'm not as good at going right as those guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the first time I went, I think uh, Rossi was like, you're pretty good in the left-handers, and then not so good on the right-hander. <laughs> <laughs> so I've definitely worked on my right-hander since then. I went back to this last time, or one of the times before, and I was like, hey, what do you think? Did I get better? He's like, yeah, you're a little better <laughs> on the right-handers. So and it's a cool experience. Um, so it's like all the VR46 riders are there. So, and man, if you would follow them, they're, they're riding on that track a lot. And so they got their, their own bikes over there and they're, they're riding on that track a lot. And it takes a lot of finesse to ride that track. So dirt is similar to like the Daytona short track style dirt, really slippery and skittery. And, um, but it's like a full road race course with that dirt on it and that there's all the elevation and right hand turns, left hand turns, a lot of elevation. That's something JD was really surprised at this year, how much elevation there is. It's hard to really see in the videos how much, how much elevation there is and off camera corners. And then there's, the curbing just like road race stuff and that you know they go up on the curbing and everything and so really unique event and for for the 100 kilometer event that i go over for it's a team event and then rossi invites um you know different different guys from different uh forms of racing mostly road racing but different countries so there's a lot of world superbike guys and depending on the year different motor gp guys come and so so it's yeah, it's an all around fun event. It's a fun event with the, also a level of competition, and you can you know, try to your skills as well. And so it's a uh, pretty rad. And those guys are those guys are really talented on motorcycles, and and also with flat track. And uh, it's cool to see their um, interest in flat track. I know like that one of the first times I went there, like Rossi was just asking so many questions about American flat track and stuff, and. Uh, and so he, um, you know, he definitely follows a bit and, uh, and, and is interested. And, um, you know, I've talked to some of the guys about, you know, trying to get him over here for an event and some of the best questions about it. So, you know, hopefully we get to see him race over here one of these days. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty rad. Would you go do it again? Are you planning on going next year? Yeah, I mean, I've gone the last, like, four years in a row. So when the invite comes, I say yes. <laughs> So hopefully, absolutely. hopefully it keeps coming and uh you know i wouldn't be surprised if uh, jd and i go back again as teammates again um but we'll see how it all pans out so one year i teamed up with james Rispoli, one year with uh yeah my buddy thunder and then, um, yeah just 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 depends how it all shakes out so and brad's gone over there with me as well the first time brad was over there as well so brad baker so yeah it's been rad um you know hopefully hopefully kenny and i come have a great year this year and then i'll try and uh try and came back and drag him over there. So, yeah. That's what I was, I was going to say. Take Kenny over there with you. I think that'd be an awesome team. Yeah. yeah. 
I have to I have to start riding way before though. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Kenny, we kind of put you on the spot. You're at your house. Do you have anything close by? I know you were in your office earlier. We didn't have a good connection. Do you have anything show and tell close by? Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. it is, is your XR up there? Oh, that has that is so cool. Is that there? It know? is. That's a full XR 750 and a set of leathers. It looks like that's cool. That what year is that from? So that is, uh, how did I get it up there? <laughs> he, he's really strong, Kristen. Yeah. No, uh, that that bike, I actually, I think it was right before the factory Harley Davidson years, 05. Um, I had a few, few of them, and uh, kind of just kept it, sold off a few, and then kept that one. So after my Harley days, um, I kind of made it a replica of what I rode. I had a, a gas tank, a tail section, and and stuff. And uh, up there is uh, the first year I rode for Harley Davidson, the, the first year, nice. The first year that uh, I rode for them and won the championship, those are leathers and helmets. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Getting it up there was a chore. We actually, Mies was here. I don't even know why he was here. He's at a motorcycle show down the road or something. And uh, he called me when we first moved here and uh, I had that thing to go up there. So me, Ed, so he, he's got some muscles. So he came over and we put a, like a cattle gate up like as a ramp and pushed it up with like four or five guys. It was it was a heck oh. of a chore and it was pretty scary. <laughs> so staying up there. Yeah. I got some good pictures. Maybe I'll send you some. That'd be cool. I've got one show and tell from Kenny. This is from your last year. I uh, I won this uh, as the high bidder. Uh, it's your plate from the Black Hills Half Mile. Nice. And uh, I'm going to keep that forever signed right Sweet. here. I also have, I don't know. I How think much did you pay for that, Scotty? I think it was, yes. uh, I think it was five hundred and twenty-two dollars or nice. five hundred two dollars, something like that. You know, so that was part of your retirement fund. Wait, I guess. thank but, you. <laughs> <laughs> but another piece that I have, you have the same thing in your office. It's a blown-up cover of a of a Cycle News magazine. It was a win, maybe just another win in your collection of wins. Uh, but it was important to me because it was the first time I was announcing at uh, Topeka, Kansas, and I got to interview yeah. you after you won that night. And you signed that for me, so uh, man, I got a lot of I got a lot of uh, good stuff and good memories of you racing for sure. And I can't wait to to make more of you as a team owner. But before we before we leave your house, um, tell us about your training track and what you have outside for training. I know we've seen you throwing over tractor tires and stuff like that back when you were racing. I know we got to see that video a lot that one season. But uh, what else is at your house that you where you ride and and where you try to stay in shape? Well, right now everything like. I haven't been riding or anything, so everything's pretty grown up. Um, the short track, I got a little short track out back, clay. It wouldn't take much to get back in shape. And then uh, a pretty cool turn track that uh, that I used to ride on quite a bit every day almost. And, uh, you know, now the cows are out there eating the grass off of it. So it's uh, – hey, times have changed, and uh, but uh, it's good. You know, it's like I said, I need to – need to get back on a bike and uh kind of kind of get my fix here it's uh one of those things you know i'll i'll probably if i can still walk i always ride a motorcycle so it's uh one of those things that's awesome are we gonna have to get you a cowboy hat since you're <laughs> raising cattle now or what <laughs> yeah no we we don't have many but uh we have around i think six right now so they're they're cool. They're they're pretty much our pets, which kind of sucks. <laughs> you know, I was, I was I got them to make money, and uh, they became our pets. So I kind of got shafted there. <laughs> now they're just expensive pets that eat a lot. So yeah, no, cool. it's good. We have twenty acres that they have. They keep great the grass pat, great pat, great pasture, and so it's uh, it's good. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Uh, Sammy, good luck in 2020. Kenny, good luck to you as well, I guess, thanks. as a crew chief and, and a team owner or part team owner. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the AT Show. We really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yep, we'll see you there. Take care. See you in Volusia. That's right. That's Sammy. Yeah. Sammy Halbert, Kenny Coolbat Jr., and that's Kristen Beat right there. I'm Scotty Dubler. Thanks for tuning in to the AFT Show. Today's show is presented by Cycle Gear. Motorcycling is the gift that keeps on giving. 
Cycle Gear, JMP Cycles, and Revzilla are partnering this June to raise funds for the Kurt Caselli Foundation, the National Motorcycle Safety Fund, and the Motorcycle Relief Project. Join the Ride is calling Charity Ride the weekend of June 19th through the 21st as we donate $1 for every 10 miles ridden up to $30,000 plus on Saturday, June 20th, 5% of all in-store sales across Cycle Gear and JMP Cycles will be donated to the fund. Go to CycleGear.com ride for more info.